Summon creatures pulling levers, AoE potion buffing, and cute cats luring enemies into traps are just a few of the many things you can do in Baldur's Gate 3. Because the game is so complex, there are many things you can do which are not clearly spelled out to the players. So today I wanted to share what I wish I knew about when I first started playing Baldur's Gate 3. I'll include timestamps below so you can check out whatever you think is new to you. You can send explosive barrels, stackable crates, or even locked chests directly to your camp. Just pick the item up and then right click it and send to camp from your backpack. Then when you next go to camp, it will be in the chest waiting for you. There's an unlimited amount of storage space in the chest in your camp, so you can store them for whenever you need them. Whenever you can deal enough damage that you can blast open your chest, you can do it all at once for a lot of loot. You could even have one character sitting in camp at your chest and then right click to send the items directly to your other characters, making it easier to move heavy objects instantly. You can also move items from one character's inventory at any time. So if you're in combat and need a health potion but don't have it on that character, hit the tab button, open all the inventories up, and you can drag it to that character's inventory, allowing you to easily access the potion or a scroll. It's also very easy to go to your camp to send items because of waypoints. During your explorations in this world, you're going to find that there are many waypoints. You can access these waypoints from anywhere just by pulling up your map with the letter M and hitting the waypoint on the right. In your waypoints list, the camp is also included, so waypoints allow you to port directly to camp at almost any time. And if you wanted to, you could split your party with the G hotkey to only send one character to camp instead. This G hotkey also has a nice feature of allowing you to regroup characters quickly using waypoints. For example here I have four characters all in different areas of the map, and I want all four characters to be here, but there are no waypoints close to it. So what I can do is I can send each character back to camp, and then on the character that I want them to be grouped at, I hit the G button on, and then when I hit the leave camp button again, you will now teleport all characters back to that location. But that trick will only work if you're doing single player. One of the best ways to make playing this game feel more fluid and unlock a lot of your hidden power is learning the available hotkeys. For example, Alt will allow you to see nearby items and interactable items to make it easier to loot. You can auto loot using spacebar or use spacebar to end your turns while in combat. Holding shift allows for viewing all of the actions related to your hide ability, including sight cones and brightness levels. The letter O unlocks tactical view, which allows you to view the battle from another perspective and highlight objects in the game world. It also lets you expand the camera out a little bit further so you can reach areas with spells that normally you wouldn't be able to. You can quickly hide using C or use the group hide with shift C to quickly hide your whole team. You can also create your own fully customizable skill bar, which massively increases gameplay speed once you're used to it and makes the game feel a lot more enjoyable. The letter Z makes jumping feel a lot quicker and much easier to use out of combat. And lastly, when you're out of combat, you can hit shift space to activate turn-based mode. Turn-based mode allows you to literally freeze time in the game, allowing you to do some crazy stuff. If there's an enemy moving around in a patrol and you want to engage it in a specific spot, you can freeze them there for an easy setup. Or if an enemy is running away, you can instantly freeze them in their tracks. It also puts a pause on your buff timers, allowing you to easily buff your party. A cool way to buff your party is by moving them close together and melee attacking a potion on the floor so it splashes all four party members. Or when you just finished a fight and you're rushing to use help on a downed ally, activating turn-based mode will buy you enough time to get to them without risking their death. Turn-based mode is incredibly useful when combined with hide, as it stops sight cones from moving around and it allows you to steal while the enemy is frozen looking away. If you enter an area where there's a lot of traps, it can feel a bit awkward to navigate them, but turn-based mode allows you to navigate them with ease and avoid taking extra damage. You can also use turn-based mode to set up with your summon creatures and allow their turn timers to not tick down as quickly, making it easier to reposition them before combat. Which brings me to the next tip, and that's that summon creatures are incredibly useful, much more so than even Divinity's ones. Most summon creatures in this game can interact with things by either holding alt and clicking them, or by attacking them. They almost always tank a hit in combat situations, and they're easily resummoned afterwards, saving health potions or spell slots. Every summon creature comes with their own utility, and often it's unique to that creature. A couple of my favorites are the cat's meow ability, which allows you to group up enemies before an encounter, possibly into a pile of explosives or a cloud of daggers, and then trigger the explosive from turn-based mode after running the cat away to safety of course. The ability Mage Hand is my other favorite. Because of it having both the throw and the shove action, it can become a group healer or a ranged bomber in combat. Also the Gith Yankee's Racial Hand is invisible, making it always possible to get into a good spot for shoving enemies or moving objects easily. They make great scouts for areas you want to check out because they often don't trigger any cutscenes when walking through there, and they can even fit into areas that might be too small for your character. Some summoned creatures also have access to one of the greatest mobility moves in the game. 
fly. And as far as mobility goes, mobility abilities are king. If you have access to an ability that lets you move a far distance, it is one of the greatest strengths you will ever have in combat. Your ranged fighters can instantly vanish from an impossible melee situation with ease, or your melee characters can get on top of their back line and reduce incoming damage instantly. It also allows you to escape from a situation where you know that combat is unwinnable and allows you to reset it and try again. Oftentimes these movement abilities can be used out of combat to find hidden areas and unlock new secrets just by making use of a higher jump or a teleport. If you can complete your attack and then use these mobility spells to escape, you're basically invincible. Knowing when to fight or when to take flight will make the game much more enjoyable. Another way to make combat more enjoyable is to understand that damage is not your only choice. Utility spells or damage spells with utility are often better options than pure damage. It's very easy when you start this game to look at cantrips like these three here and say, oh, Firebolt is the best because it does the highest damage, but that's really only true some of the time. Let's briefly just go over these three right now. Sacred Flame does less damage, but it doesn't require shooting projectile. So if you can't get into an area where projectile can be fired, then this still allows you to attempt to damage the enemy, but it does allow the enemy to roll for a dexterity saving throw, making it harder to use consistently. Ray of Frost does a little bit less damage, but it can apply a slow of 3 meters to their movement speed, and it can freeze blood or water surfaces that they may be standing on. Creating an ice surface is super useful versus any melee character, and allows you to kite them with ease because they will often fall down when moving. Ray of Frost combos well when you've made the character bleed and created the blood surface under them, with a range attack or a melee attack. And then we have Firebolt, which Firebolt does have higher damage, so it's probably more useful in situations where you're fighting another range character who you can't kite, and you can also use it to trigger trigger explosives or ignite some surfaces, like grease. But sometimes you would want that surface to stay greasy so that the enemy is slowed rather than igniting it, so you do have to think about if you want to use Firebolt. The other thing to keep in mind is that these cantrips are all different damage types. Some enemies will be immune to fire or frost, and then you don't even have the option to cast those spells on them. Those are a few of the basic combat tips I have, but the best tip I can give you for combat is spend your actions. Too many times I've seen people in this game end their turn with an action, a bonus action, or movement left when they could have used it. Even the developers did it in their own showcase. Spending your actions is going to improve the outcomes in almost every encounter. Oftentimes you can attack and then spend movement to kite backwards, or out of line of sight with your ranged classes. Melee may not always be able to get in range to do their attack, but they can often throw an object or use dash to get a further distance. Potions should really just be used often, especially if you have a bonus action and you're missing health, as they're surprisingly common in the game. If you're not really sure about how you can spend these actions, I recommend you check out my other video where I detailed all the advantages of the common skills and broke down this in detail. But before that, if you're a player who doesn't know what every single spell or item in the game means, then this next tip is good for you. The inspect hotkey in this game is a godsend, and I wish I knew what it did before I spent all day on wikis. Inspect allows you to press the letter T on any item, action, spell, or stat in the game. Then you can mouse over the bolded words in the text and see what it means. It's very useful when you're making your character and can help you understand the mechanics easily. It's very similar to Examine. Examine shows you a lot of useful things, like their passives, their weaknesses, their ability scores, their weight, and it's gonna save you that awkward moment where you go to cast a poison spell on an undead creature and then see the word immune pop up. It also lets you quickly read what a buff or debuff is on a target, avoiding any confusion about what the wet debuff might really be. It also explains to you if a type of terrain is damageable by certain spells, because you can right click on it and examine it to find out more details about that object. So if you see the examine option on a floor or a wall or a door, there's usually a way to destroy that. And now to end off the video, I have a few extra bonus tips for you guys. And these are tips that I felt like they're pretty good to know, but they're not really having enough depth to fill their own categories. Torches don't require proficiency to equip them in the offhand slot and light up dark areas. They also unlock the offhand bonus attack option for any class, so it can be pretty handy in the early game before you have an offhand, especially for a warlock or a wizard, since you probably won't swing with a melee weapon and it can be used as an emergency melee bonus action. Sometimes when you're trying to aim at your enemy, it's a little hard to aim at them, but you can usually aim right at the portrait and it'll snap to them. But if this still fails and you feel you're in range, you can sometimes move the mouse around and find a different way to hit them, like aiming at their foot. Use your rests often, because you're not likely to run out of food as long as you're looting stuff, and it brings your party up to full for every fight. You can block floor vents by placing an object on top of them. Just because you lost a fight, it doesn't mean it's game over. You can usually run away, reset, and come back at a later time. You can use your backpack on your hotbar for better item management. I find it useful for keeping my scrolls in there, so it's easy to click the backpack and see what scrolls I have, and then right click them to use them in combat. This way your scrolls don't clutter your bags as much and you can easily access them. You could probably do the same with potions or thrown weapons as well. 
Melee classes are often proficient in multiple weapon categories, and so it's a good idea to carry around a piercing and a bludgeoning weapon type. Then you can decide which is going to work for you in that specific fight. For example, there's times where your torch, which is a bludgeoning damage type, will do more damage than a sword if that enemy is vulnerable to bludgeoning. Alright, and that's all I have for you today. If you learned anything new in the video, leave a like and let me know. If you think I missed something, write it down and share it for others to learn too. I plan to create more Baldur's Gate content in the near future, so if you're interested, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, Proxy out.